Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I'm Crystal. Welcome to Quark Talk here on Think Tech. So this morning we have a very healthy and very balanced topic for you because sometimes, you know, everyone gets off balance. But what happens when you're like a preteen, adolescent, and some things aren't going the way you want it to go? Just basically by the way you were built, you know? Um, what happens when you're physically um, affected by certain situations? I'm talking about scoliosis. I have a wonderful guest today who's going to talk about balance and alignment because of her experience with it. She's an amazing yoga teacher, and she's also the assistant manager at Core Power. Welcome, Bonnie, Bonnie Delgada. Welcome. Hi, thank you. So nice for you to come. Thanks. I, I know, and I have to confess that I do take <laughs> Bonnie's class. And I, what I like about your class is that mm. you always have some kind of a theme you start off with. You have some kind of a thought that you bring us into mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it carries you through the class and throughout the day, which is really important, I think. And I don't know where you get it from. And I know you mentioned you had scoliosis growing up and that's kind of what brought you to yoga. Yeah. So let's hear exactly. about your whole life and how it changed because of your situation. Um, yeah, well, I used to be a dancer, so I was really serious into dance, uh, wow. ballet specifically. Okay. And, um, yeah, it was, it was actually at, a, at an audition that I was diagnosed, or that they brought it up, that it was kind of brought to our attention. How old were you? Probably 14 or 15. Okay. So, um, and it was a very typical, um, ballet it was for a conservatory right and oh. it was like a cattle call it was just you go through all these different um layers of the audition and sure. then you make it to a certain point and they bring you in a room and they test your body fat they like poke you and pinch oh, you really? and do all these things and you know they i mean they sit there talk about you like you're not even there and right, they're like okay right. nice legs and then this and then okay bend over let's see like oh, oh you have scoliosis and <sighs> that was kind of how it was really first brought out you and had it wasn't no idea. your mom had no idea no no so um and then yeah after that one of my other dance teachers mentioned it um that they thought that i might have it and i should go see a chiropractor or some sort of um doctor so yeah that was kind of how it came about and did that just shatter your dreams of being a dancer when you heard that not at the time because i don't think it was it didn't feel like a an obstacle at the time okay um, I think my biggest, my biggest challenge at that point was with my weight at the, at the time because I was, um, had an eating disorder. Wait, you had the eating disorder before or after you were diagnosed with scoliosis? Before. It was already full okay. on. This and is I the think dancer that's, problem. That's why they were able to, they, to see it so easily because, okay, yeah, um, no you could see all the bones. You could see oh, everything. Yeah, so, right. um, yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. So you had a double whammy as, as a teenage, preteen, well, yeah, adolescent. You had eating disorders and scoliosis. Yes. Sort of. Yeah. All right. And the scoliosis really, it, it wasn't anything that I felt. I didn't, you know, it didn't affect me physically at the time because it was still pretty minor and, um, and I was, yo you know, I was young and had plenty of energy and right. didn't, it didn't Nothing really, it yeah, it didn't really affect me. It did, um, what I didn't know or didn't realize at the time is what it did make it hard for me to kind of build core strength, a really short torso uh -huh. and very long legs. Right. But so that's like a dancer's body's idea. It is. A, yeah. It's kind of a dancer's body, but um, I don't have a lot of space in between like my rib cage and my hips. Uh -huh. And so kind of building the muscles there in that area is a little challenging. It's, it's just, it's very, um, there's not a lot of space. Okay. And then my spine isn't straight. It's curved. So, you know, to, to get those muscles to work correctly, yeah. you kind of need to have alignment. And, right. um, yeah, it's just a little, it's a little so challenging. So at that time, you were maybe, you know, you were off balance in many different levels. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, I think Definitely. eating disorder is like a big psychological problem for a lot of young girls. Definitely. It was, it was a big lack of balance in yeah. a lot of ways. And, and a lack of understanding, uh -huh. um, you know, of what, how, how the body works and what was good what was good at the time. Do you think a lot of it came from social pressure from your, you know, friends? Um, I think a lot of it was, for me, it was more self-driven. Okay. Um, you know, the people that I idolized at the time, prima ballerinas, all of those people. They were sticks. They were sticks, and they all had eating disorders, and that was common knowledge. Everybody knew that, and it was kind of like, those were the people that you looked up to. Right. And that was just how it was done at the time. <laughs> And your so, parents weren't concerned where the way you ate? Oh, like, they were. It was, did you lie it was to them? Big, it was, yeah, it was a big, it was a big mess. <laughs> um, and I did. I lied to them a lot. I threw away food and would, you know, pretend to eat. 
Um, but yeah, it was it was definitely a lot of internal. Um, you know, I was I was a little bit chubby as a kid, not overweight. I should have been probably more overweight than I was, but I I had a lot of energy and I was really active. Yeah. Um, but I I ate a lot of fast food growing up. My parents were divorced and okay. working mom, and mm. I ate Burger King and McDonald's every day. Right. And um, so it, it went from was, extreme. It sounded like fast food to yeah. You know, it was like fast out. food, microwave dinners, oh. to just completely avoiding food at all. Right. So, um, and there wasn't a lot of, you know, at the time there was no Whole Foods. There was no, there wasn't a lot of <laughs> Right, the organic movement food. was not really no. there. Not a lot of Nobody healthy food available, things. not a lot yeah. of, or, you know, organic or just homegrown food. I mean, right. the, it was yeah. the time of, you well, know. blame it on the generation. It was very much the, the time and place and all of that. So, so was there a tipping point um, in those early years that made you kind of reassess that, hey, I am off balance or I need help or you know, I need to go and educate myself a little bit better. Um, I did, I saw a nutritionist for a while and I saw s several different therapists. Um, nothing really stuck, nothing really, I mean, that was food pyramid days and all of the, you know, things that are kind of obsolete now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I didn't, nothing really spoke to me. It was also, I was a teenager. We were just kind of having a conversation about teenagers and very, um, you know, those were the adults, and they didn't you know. They didn't understand me. They didn't understand anything. Um, but it really wasn't until I left home and moved to New York, and was kind of on my own, that I just discovered food again and how to find balance um, in my own in my own life, and just with without any pressure, without anybody kind of watching. Like, what are you eating? What are you doing? Um, it. I just kind of found it again. Do you think uh, people have to go off balance in order to really find what balance is? Not necessarily. Um, maybe, you know, kind of in like, like in your yoga practice, you know, sometimes we, um, we practice going, you know, right. finding extremes, yeah. you know, we'll do like cat cow, find, find the extremes and then find the center. Yeah, yeah. So it's a good, um, it's good practice. You need it's a your good range, thing. right? Exactly, your range. And then you find that middle ground where you can, you know, you can balance and you right. can um, be successful. And, you know, I think for some people it works like that. Um, definitely, I mean, I think that worked for me because I know I've seen the two extremes and I, you know, I know where the middle ground is and I feel good about, you know, the things that I eat and the things that I put into my body. Did so, you have to do anything, operation for your scoliosis or you were actually lucky enough no, not to have to? Yeah, never, um, never had to do anything. I've, from what I've heard and what I've read, yeah. there's not a lot. There's not a lot of success with oh, operations really? and with um, even like the braces and things like yeah. that. Your your spine, a lot of times, it tends to move back into place or you lose your range of motion. Um, the most successful thing that I've been told and that I've heard is exercise and building your muscles. So okay. building your core strength, building the muscles in your back to support your spine and to kind of hold it up. So um, every time I've gone back to get x-rays done and get my spine checked, my spine has progressively gotten worse, but you can't tell. So every doctor that I've seen has been shocked at the, um, the amount of curve that's in my spine and how little you actually notice it wow. physically. Because you're balancing or compensating with strength on... Be yeah, because my muscles are holding it up. Wow. So, um, yeah, I guess... Because my daughter just had a friend who went to the mainland for an operation for scoliosis. Uh -huh. And, you know, it's detrimental for a young girl. It's a huge... I mean, it's six months. You're, like, you're out. Bedridden. Yeah. Right. And the so social pressures or just the... You know, it's just a, so many layers of pressure. It's, it's a lot. And to do it at that time in your life is yeah. really is really hard. I mean, that was kind of a big, I had a, I had an, um, an operation when I was 18 and I moved to, I moved to New York to right. dance Yeah. and I, um, I had to get surgery and I was out for two months and that was really hard. Right. That was, and I think that was maybe part of where things shifted a little bit for me um, because I, I was out of that world and I actually became more social and because I had been so focused on the dance for a while. Right. Okay. That yeah, I yeah, didn't, okay. I wasn't very social in high school. I wasn't very, um, yeah, I didn't have a lot of friends or I didn't go to parties. I didn't do you anything. Didn't. So, um, because partly because I was so afraid that I would gain weight. Like I didn't drink, I didn't smoke oh. pot, I didn't do anything okay, that you weren't you. supposed to do because right. I was afraid I would That's, gain weight. <laughs> that was a plus. So yeah, it kind of kept me um, 
it kept me focused and right. it kept me, but it was also a, a very extreme. It kept closed you off from right. socializing. Exactly. So, um, yeah. What about the social pressures of, you know, how your body image, how did that affect how your self-esteem and was that part of your kind of closing off to not socializing or? I think so, definitely a little bit um, of that kind of insecurity. Like when you're self-conscious your, about your body to the point where it was going to affect like, you know, you liked this boy and you didn't want to get too close because you didn't want to have him. Oh, judge definitely, you. Really? definitely. Okay. And I always, even when I was really skinny, I thought I was fat. Okay. So, yeah. How do you tell people? Wow. You know. How do you? How do? How do parents first of all uh, detect that as a problem, and then how do you? How would you coach a girl <laughs> that age? Um, it's hard because you know. Again, you're you're also battling this kind of teenager mentality. This like rebellious, like you don't understand me kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Um, but then you also need to. Um, you know, kind of be understanding and aware. So, honestly, I, I don't, you know, I, I think the best thing for me was the physical part because um, that's what kept, like, I know now that I'm not going to, you know, I, I eat whatever I want now. I eat Taco Anything? Bell. Really? I eat, <laughs> I eat french fries. I eat everything um, because I know that I, I'm very active and I'm very physical and I'm gonna burn it off. Like my fluctuation in weight is very minimal now. Good. Um, so I know that my lifestyle and the types of food that I normally eat, you know, I don't eat Taco Bell all the time. Yeah. Or I don't do, you know, I, I spend all my money at Whole Foods. And, you know, I like salads. And <laughs> I think I like I've things. seen you there before. Yeah, like, <laughs> we're there all the time. There. All, it's dangerous. A couple times a, a day, right. so. Um, but, you know, when you're, when your body is, when you feel healthy, when you feel good, you know, like you do when you come out of a yoga class, your yeah. first instinct isn't to put something like a True. burger into your right. body. Right. It's, you know, it's something healthy. It's fruit or salad or something that's going to keep you feeling as good as you feel when you walk out. But that's of because you're so aligned and you're so balanced now. But when you were all balanced, when you were all scattered, right. your concept was a little distorted. Yeah. What were you doing to your body that you knew made more damage? Um, other than not eating, right? Well, I would, I would also, um, I other than you know, I was dancing several hours a day. That was my, um, that was the norm. And then sometimes I'd be home and I'd put on like the rubber outfit, the sweat, the plastic oh, suit, really? the sweat suit, and just like oh, run, like jog at home, like at home, or like try to burn off calories and um, you know a lot of calorie counting and things like that. And I don't. I don't do that anymore. I don't pay attention to that. I think Good. it's more, um, you know, and it, again, it's the knowledge that we have now versus back then. Right. So, um, you know, back then there was a lot of talk about, you know, zero fat and low calories and things like that. And we know now that that doesn't have so much of an effect on your weight as things like sugar and processed foods. Yes. And that's actually um, something. I read a book by, I think his name was Kevin Lau. He's uh -huh. a... Um, doctor based out of China, I believe, and his specialty is scoliosis. Oh. And um, he he actually studied the, the main thing in his, his theory of why, um, you know, how to kind of prevent and what is causing it to be such a common thing in our society today and in, in modern society is, um, is diet and is yeah. processed foods and sugar. Yeah, a big so, evil. Um, yeah. Well, you know, let's hold that thought because, you know, with our balanced concept of life and exercise, we'll come back after a quick break. And Bonnie, hopefully we can go through some, I don't know, yoga exercises or somehow we, so we can align ourselves even in this small studio to yeah. share with our audience. Okay, so sure. we'll be back. Aloha, everyone. I hope you've been watching Think Tech Hawaii, but I'm here to invite you to watch me on Viva Hawaii every Monday at 3 p.m. I'm waiting for you. Mahalo. Aloha. My name is Josh Green. I serve as senator from the Big Island on the Kona side, and I'm also an emergency room physician. My program here on Think Tech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'll have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction to our health care system and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting ThinkTech. 
Aloha, I'm Chantal Seville, host of the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii, and I'm going on tour. I'm taking you around the world. We're going to Canada, and then we're going to, well, we're in America, then we're going to San Francisco. So keep staying tuned, 11 a.m. every Wednesday on the Savvy Chick Show. We'll see you next time. Welcome back to Clock Talk. So Bonnie and I are talking about balance and alignment and you know the whole concept. You're, before the break, you were talking about how um, processed food is a big culprit to mm -hmm. even our body and how it forms. It's just shocking how much it's taken over kind of our American lifestyle. It is, the world. and and not even just um, you know our our lifestyle here, but other other cultures. So um, this this guy Kevin Lau and other. Um, other scientists before him yeah. had studied indigenous cultures in other areas, so in Africa, right. in South America, um, in Indonesia, that were exposed to processed foods like canned foods or right. think you know um, American foods, whatever, yeah. and compared them to cultures that kept their own diet, right. that kept their right. indigenous diet, right. and they noticed um, that their teeth formed differently. Huh. So the cultures that kept their so indigenous they don't need diet, braces. They don't need braces. Their teeth form, you know, naturally and perfectly, or not necessarily perfectly, right, but, but their teeth form well, and that's um, a sign that your bones are growing correctly. Wow, is how your teeth form. I needed braces. I had braces for yeah, who a long time. Right, and um, so yeah, that was kind. Of, that's uh, one of the studies that uh, they used to kind of see the effects of you know this processed food, even though we think we're getting all of these nutrients, our yeah. bodies aren't absorbing them. So even like your scoliosis might have right. been affected by what you ate? What I grew up the eating, way, the fast food. Or what food. your mother ate when she was carrying you? Or? Possibly, yeah. So wow. all of the, you know, the foods that, you know, and and I remember growing up, my parents would always be like, why are you still still hungry? Why are you so hungry? Yeah. And we sugars. would be, we'd go, we'd go eat and I would still be hungry and it was because probably because I was not retaining the nutrients right. that I needed. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, at the time, you don't nobody know. knew that. Right, right. So now we're here. We're here <laughs> to, like, wake people up on the importance of eating non-processed food and uh, aligning our bodies with balanced concepts of everything. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to yoga, because you are a yoga instructor, mm -hmm. um, what are things that you can do, like even people who have uh, spinal problems or, or any other kind of bone mm -hmm. issues, are there certain exercises that we can kind yeah, of... Yeah, so, um, so again, going back to balance. Yes. The, so yoga, what kind of keeps me at yoga, what made me uh, love it, is the balance of strength and flexibility. Yes. So, um, you know, and that's, that is kind of the key to everything because you want to, you know, you do want to stretch and you want to be flexible and um, be able to kind of open up those areas in your spine and whatever areas that you, you need that. But then to be able to also build the muscle around, um, you know, around your spine and support it is really important as well. And I think that's what kind of drew me to core power yoga and uh. made me want to teach yoga and teach sculpt particularly. I teach a lot of sculpt. Right. Um, you so know, because weight bearing exercise actually creates uh, bone density, doesn't yes, it? Yes. Yeah. It creates your bone density and then also the muscles around your bone to support it. So especially girls. Girls don't have much upper body strength. Yeah. So what are some ways to do that? Um, obviously with the weights, so a lot of the things yeah. that we do in Sculpt with, um, you know, with weights. But uh, another another way, just sitting up, there's yeah. a lot of core exercises that you can do just sitting. Right. So we do, um, you know, we can do a little, kind of start a little breathing. You want to do a little yeah, yoga Yeah, sure, with why me? not? Okay. And you guys just join in if you need to. Okay. Um, to so sometimes, you know, usually we'll start in child's pose and kind of stretch out. Right. But a lot of times you can start seated. Um, so we can just start with a C and just sit nice and straight. Uh -huh. See if you can stack your shoulders. We talk about um, stacking your joints. So mm -hmm. again, that's a way to find alignment. So your shoulders over your hips. Mm -hmm. And then um, take a nice deep in inhale. And open mouth, exhale. And then see if you can just kind of create space and length from your ribs to your hips. And then again, that same length from your neck, um, in your neck and at the top of your head. And then Try to inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, bring your hands to heart center. So people in the offices, there's no excuse not to stretch. Yeah, you can do you're yoga at your desk. Chair. Yeah. So we can do a couple rounds of this as a sun salutation. We're yeah. doing it seated, but you can also do it it's standing. Good. Exhale, your hands to your heart center. And then we repeat three times usually. Inhale. Exhale, bring it down. 
And then from here, maybe you just place your hands on your um, thighs for mm -hmm. now. And a lot of times we'll do cat cows in a tabletop on the ground. Mm -hmm. But you can also do it seated and it kind of helps to, again, develop your muscles and stretch everything out at the same time. So you kind of press your chest forward, inhale. And then exhale, bring it back and press your spine Is back. Is it harder for guys to do this one? Possibly they're because as they're bendy here. Exactly. So forward and back, it stretches out the muscles and it also kind of finds the extremes in your spine yeah. too and stretches out yeah, your spine. Yeah, it feels good. And then you can come back to center. But we'll try one more and then back to center. Yeah. Or back and then to center. I hope you guys are doing this with us because it's really good. Even Zuri, you in there. No excuse. <laughs> I don't see you moving. Come on. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can. And once, you know, after doing that a couple times, you should feel it in your core. You should feel your lower belly working to kind of move back and forth, rib isolations. Right. You can even do that. I do it sometimes in sculpt, side to side rib isolations. Uh -huh. It's something that was really big um, in jazz. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, I remember the, that. You can't you know, do you anything else. Thing, you just kind of do this. And it was, yeah, you know, right. kind of like 80s, 90s. <laughs> yeah. But it's actually a core exercise because okay. it works your obliques going side to side. Right. And then forward and back, you kind of get yeah. your... Yeah. Um, the abs in the center. Okay. But that's like, it's a great core workout and it's actually, um, I did a kundalini class one time. What does that mean for people who don't know yoga? Kundalini, uh, it's, it's hard to explain 100%, but it focuses on the chakras and depending on what you're doing, it's generally a lot of breath work. Okay. So the entire class was seated. So oh. for an hour. Isn't that frustrating? It's hard. It's really hard if to you sit move. for an hour. Right. And um, it, that's actually a really great core exercise is what? just sit up straight. Not like to slouch or sit okay, in a chair. that's true. Sit straight, just yeah. like we are right now, yeah. for an hour. And then, you know, again, we did some of those cat-cow variations, different types of breathing, like faster breathing, slow, and um, that kind of comes from different areas in your body. And um, that was really cool just because it's very challenging. It's yeah. different. You know, yeah. your, bo your whole body's not moving. You're really just What is seated. the concept between all behind all those breathing techniques? Um, it's different ways to flow the air through your body and to, to channel energy. Okay. And that's kind of the idea of Kundalini is, is channeling energy um, through the, the chakras and that's, okay. you know, it's some, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, that that's a could, whole other thing. That but I'm trying to show. link <laughs> the whole concept of breathing with balance. Right. Um, again, just getting energy moving within your body. Yeah. So the breath, um, the breath work kind of to, again, moving fast, moving yeah. slowly. In um, vinyasa, what we do at Core Power Yoga, we use, um, uh, sorry, we use uh, ujjayi breath. Right. So ujjayi breath like that. is... the ocean breath. Yeah, the ocean breath, the breath of fire, yeah. um, where you inhale and exhale through your nose, but you also use the muscles in your throat to slow down the exhale. So, and the idea behind that is um, that you are controlling your breath and you actually benefit more from your like, slow, deep inhale and yeah. then a slow, deep exhale. Yeah. And you kind of slow everything down. Your heart rate slows down. Right. Everything comes back to the breath, doesn't it? It does. I mean, just say if somebody is really off balance in life in mm -hmm. general, let's say something really just screwed up in your life, it goes back to the breath. It if does. If you don't have the breath, you're going to be palpitating through life yeah. and, and stressing and your whole body just kind of manifests with all these problems. Yeah, even if you're just having a bad day or yes. you're about to have a conversation with somebody and you're frustrated yes. and you just take that second and just... <sighs> right. Like, okay. Yeah. Now, and it just, you can just restart everything. Can a young person learn to do this though? Definitely. Okay. A lot of people are using it now in schools. Good. A lot of teachers um, from like kindergarten, from really young kids, they're starting to teach some yoga, you know, and it looks a little different. Right. When kids are doing it, they change the names of the poses to animal yes, names. Yes, yes. It becomes a little more fun and interactive. And then um, they find, they've been finding that they're able to focus more in class. And that's actually the whole idea behind physical yoga. So, um, you know, yoga is really the meditation, the exercise of meditation and, um, you know, finding your, your inner peace and all of those things. Yeah. The physical practice of yoga was started to prepare the body to meditate. So basically a way to get the wiggles out, all of the, you know, the... Um, so kids need that. Kids They're need so that. fidgety. Exactly. <laughs> how do you and they train need to them? Move. Quick, tell me how to They, they <laughs> need to move. Um, and so to be able to do that and then, okay, we can sit and focus. And I find that, you know, when I go to work, if I take a class first thing mm. and then go sit down at the computer and start yes, doing things... it's still... Yeah, and I'm so much more, I can just everything happens more organically and you know whereas if I go and start working and then I'm like okay maybe I'll take a class later or maybe I don't take a class 
everything is I'm more frazzled. I don't, you know, I'm just not as efficient yeah. as I would be when I go sit down and I'm centered. Sure. And I can, you know, get work done. So, um, what you about know, people the, who don't have time? They, well, they claim yeah. they don't have time. You know, is it an excuse or how do we? I mean, there are all kinds of things you can do, say, at your desk or, yeah, you know, back to that. a 10 minute, you know, you can do. Um, a sun A and a sun B flow, which is just basically what we did, the sun salutation, yeah. arms up and then down, breathing exercises. So you can just do that. What and do you call the one when you stretch your arms back? I really oh, the like cactus, that. that's you a good really one. pull back. That feels really oh, yeah. good, especially yeah. right now. I'm kind of yeah. sore. I did, a, I did a sculpt <laughs> yesterday and I'm kind of sore. Um, but that's, uh, we just call that cactus arms and it's usually with a little back bend. So right. you're in mountain pose right here yeah, yeah. and then you, um, cactus your arms and press your chest forward Yeah, and, and lift you up. You can feel it all yeah, you feel it right up and, there yeah. and then you feel it in your upper spine too. Right, right. So, and that's, again, that's even a core exercise cause you work on pulling your belly in as right, you do that. Right. So everything you do comes back to your core. Yes. Um, so yeah. Okay, so if you had, you know, so somebody to take away something, this whole concept and, uh, you know, of balance and alignment mm -hmm. through yoga. I mean, no, there are some basic poses we've went through, but what about, you know, taking it a little bit step further in life and how do we approach life when we're off balance or when we feel really un un unaligned? The first thing you can do, and we talk about it all the time, is um, self-care. Yeah. So that's, um, you know, that's one of the main principles of yoga is self-care so the way that you treat yourself is kind of reflective of how you're going to treat other people mm. so and you might notice that you know with being a part of the yoga culture right you know um people who take the time to take care of themselves to take care of their bodies physically mentally emotionally all of it um you know tend to be more balanced and tend True. to treat other people better right tend to be more effective in you know whatever they're doing their work their life all of it um you naturally kind of find that balance yeah. because you're saying, okay, I'm going to do this for myself. You know, a lot of moms come in or um, wives and they're like, oh my gosh, my, my family is so happy when I come to yoga because I'm a better mom. I'm a oh, nicer person. You know, I'm more patient. So it's released a lot of stress and it's just yeah. kind of balanced. And it, and it just allows people to be a little, maybe a little more compassionate, huh. a little um, more patient and, you know, to function right. a little better with, a good point. with everybody else. So mm -hmm. self-care, take care of yourself first. Okay. And then it just, everything else happens. Everything else happens. It does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bonnie, speak to our audience. Like, what do you have to say to them today to give a nice thought for them to carry through the day? Um, love yourself, take care of yourself. Um, do, you know, do things that make you happy and you will in turn kind of, it'll, it does turn itself around. It does um, reflect in everything that you do. I think that's... That's a nice one. Let's hold on it. to that thought. <laughs> um, Bonnie, thank you for coming on. Uh, Bonnie, go take a yoga class with her at CORE. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, take that with you. Find your balance and breathe and enjoy, like you said. Thank you so much. Thanks All right. All right. Me. That's for us. See you next time. Bye. Bye.